Good afternoon. Uh, I know you your hopes were up uh, that you that you might uh, you thought the Bible study might be canceled, but uh, <laughs> welcome back to reality. <laughs> uh, amen. Uh, let us begin right away. And although there are two parts to this study, we will do only one. Wow, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's uh, turn to our ma main passage, Nehemiah chapter tw 12, verse 30. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 30. The priests and the Levites purified themselves. They also purified the people, the gates, and the wall. This is the word of God. Uh, <clears throat> after the residents of Jerusalem, spiritually, we talked about how uh, the people were committed and dedicated themselves by coming to live in Jerusalem. And uh, by the way, for those who are uh, not, uh, as you see, we are on lesson 42. Those who missed 41 lessons previously, uh, we are studying uh, uh, about the reconstruction of Zerubbabel's temple, which is the second temple, and the reconstruction of the city wall after the return from Babylon. And so uh, our title is the dedication of the city walls. We already finished building the walls, and now we have to dedicate. Uh, so uh, after the residents of Jerusalem spiritually and physically prepared themselves, the dedication of the city walls began at last. And as we also are uh, in the process of uh, construction of our church, and not only physically the two units, but we are always in the process of construction spiritually because we are the temple of God and we are being reconstructed. That's called redemption. Uh, yeah, finding our way back to the Garden of Eden and furthermore to the New Jerusalem in the kingdom of heaven. And so that is our work of construction. But physically also we can relate more because our construction is going on right now. And physical construction will begin soon. But after the construction, we are going to dedicate, as we did with this sanctuary, dedicate it to God and uh, have a dedication service. So let us think about that And as we think about the dedication of the city walls. Nehemiah first visited the Levites from all over the country and brought them to Jerusalem so that they could sing with thanksgiving and play the cymbals, harps, and lyres with joy at the dedication of the city wall. And I believe uh, every service that we have today, you know, first service and this Bible study, we were celebrating with, you know, physical symbols and drums and guitars and, and so on. But uh, with all our hearts, may we be able to dedicate ourselves, dedicate our church day by day, week by week, every service. Amen. In this lesson, we will examine the introductory contents of the dedication of the city wall. The dedication of the city wall was not held immediately after the construction was completed. Though the wall construction finished on the 25th of the sixth month, Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, the genealogy of the first returnees from the Babylonian captivity was organized afterwards in chapter 7. The Israelites listened to the sermon about the law from Ezra, the scribe, on the first day of the seventh month, which is the, the Feast of the Trumpets. Okay? Uh, trumpet represents the proclamation of God's word. And so on the Feast of the Trumpets, which is the first of the seventh month, Tishri, they proclaim the word. And here, you look at the process. You build the, the, the city walls, build a temple, and then you uh, they went through the genealogy of the returnees and that genealogy needed to be cleaned out also because there were other people who were saying oh I'm of this tribe tribe of Levi coming back from Babylon although when they were going to Babylon they were of different tribe coming back to Babylon they wanted to be of the tribe of Judah tribe of Levi so uh, Ezra needed to go through the genealogy and make sure those who intermarried with Gentiles, biblically, uh, or had to, had to repent or taken out and so on and, and purify the genealogy first. And then the, the word of God was proclaimed. 
And the Feast of Booths was observed from the 15th day of the seventh month, on, according to Nehemiah chapter 8. Furthermore, on the 24th day of the seventh month, all the people gathered and fasted and repented, as well as renewing and sealing the covenant. And we talked about that last week also. However, there were, also, uh, there were so few residents in Jerusalem that the heads of the people, along with one of, the, one of every ten chosen by lots and every volunteers, came to live in Jerusalem. So all these things had to take place. This is Nehemiah chapter 11. And then at the dedication of the walls, the purification ceremony. The purification ceremony was held first. The priests and Levites first purified themselves and also purified the people, the gates, and the city. The priests and Levites who had to perform the purification ceremony first followed the purification reg regulations, which was then followed by the purification ceremony for the people and the city gates and walls where they lived. Chapter 12, verse 30, we read, the priests and the Levites purify themselves. They also purify the people and the gates and the wall. The sacrificial offerings for people were killed. Not the people were killed. Sacrificial offerings were killed for the people and given as sin offerings. But for the building, the sacrificial offerings, blood was sprinkled for purification. If you remember uh, the tasks of the, the Levites and the priests on the uh, atonement day, in the tabernacle, uh, there is sprinkling of the blood. Okay? And of course for us, it's the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of, uh, of the sacrifice was sprinkled on the gates and the walls to purify it, which shows us that Jesus would later come as a sacrificial offering on the cross and sprinkle his blood, not only on the hearts of the saints, but in every corner of our lives to purify it. So I pray that you may take Jesus to every corner of your life, to your home. I mean, don't take a brush and start sprinkling real blood. <laughs> but in prayer, really, really purify and bless every corner of your life, even the members of your family who are, may not believe in Jesus yet. You know, pray upon them. You know, pray with them. If they don't want that, pray without them knowing. And I believe that God will purify them. And lead them to Christ. Third, went up on the wall and appointed two groups, two groups of procession. After all the purification ceremonies, Nehemiah, along with Ezra, made the leaders of Judah go up the wall and appointed two great choirs to proceed on the top of the wall. One group of choir was led by Ezra, while the other group was led by Nehemiah. Uh, we were having a discussion about uh, a problem we have with the choir. The choir is growing too fast. And the seats, the seats are limited. And so we said, maybe we should divide the choir into two groups. <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe in the future we might have to. Uh, but... Uh, if you are, are a newcomer or if you want to join in the new, new year uh, a ministry, choir is pretty full. <laughs> we need some people in AV, ushers. We have other departments too, okay? <laughs> but but if, if God is really calling upon you to sing for him, praise team is there too. <laughs> and choir is there. <laughs> so I'm not discouraging you to join from joining choir, but uh, I'm encouraging you to join other ministries too. <laughs> no amen, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so the choir following Ezra, names of the followers, the line of praise following Ezra were Hoshaya and half of the leaders of Judah, <laughs> along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshulam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, and Jeremiah. Moreover, some of the sons of the priests held trumpets, and their names were Zechariah, Shemaiah, Azarel, Melali, Gilgalai. 
ลาลายมาอีมาอายนัทานีลจูดาและฮานานีเนี่ยอคุณชินเนียมาเนี่ย12 35 and 36 the root they followed Ezra and began marching outside the valley gate entered the city went on top of the wall proceeded through the southern outer wall and the refuse gate reached the fountain gate and came down from wall to from the wall to enter the fountain gate Nehemiah 12:37 states at the fountain gate they went directly up the steps of the city of David by the stairway of the wall above the house of David to the water gate on the east oh. I was reading this and I was thinking for our dedication service should we have moving choir <laughs> <laughs> Come in that door and go out that door. <laughs> our where's our uh, conductor? <laughs> She's probably having a headache. <laughs> Here, directly uses the Hebrew conjunction ve and neged, which means right in front of when combined. Remember at Baraka. You know, it's the choir that won the battle, according, according to God's instructions. So choir, <laughs> I discourage you from joining choir, and I'm encouraging. Um, and <laughs> that's how powerful choir is, and how important choir, choral anthem and praise is in our service. It casts out all. It it declares victory be, even before we begin the service. So so. What I'm trying to say is, in your daily life, start with choir praise. You know, it doesn't. If you, it doesn't have to be a, a full song. Praising the name of God in the beginning of your day when you wake up, that declares victory for you day by day. Amen. And it, in other words, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it means in front of, right in front of, when combined. <coughs> Excuse me. So on the east. Does not imply that directions have changed, but means in the east. Okay, on not on the east, uh, in the east, which modifies the water gate. In other words, if translated using the meaning of the original text, it means they entered the fountain gate, went up the stairs of the city of David that's right in front, past the stairway that goes to the top of the city wall, past the house of David, and arrived at the. Watergate in the east. <clears throat> east is in the temple. East is where the, uh, uh, if we read in Ezekiel, the spirit of God returned. East is where the Lord said He will come. Right. So uh, east also means in front, uh, in the uh, Hebrew Hebraic understanding. So in application to our uh, to us, every worship, every time we come before God, we are dedicating ourselves. You are the temple of God. We are dedicating ourselves as the temple to God, and I believe that's what we are doing every service. And so, what what kind of attitude? How should we pre prepare to come to the Lord every service? Sometimes we come. And we're angry up until we enter that door, because of the traffic or different things. Satan always, always. Number one, he tries to keep us from coming to church. Number two, he tries to agitate us while we come to church. Okay. Number three, he tries to make us forget all the grace before we leave the church. May we gain victory over this. This Satan's scheme, and before coming to church, may we may we go through a prayer and praise, where we seek God to purify us before we come into the church to dedicate ourselves to Him in this service. And I also think think of it, of this in a different way, a completely different way. Maybe. We should dedicate ourselves for Monday through Thursday. 
And in preparation to dedicate ourselves for the whole week, we are being purified today. You are, you are purified by the word of God, and now you're ready to dedicate. How are we going to dedicate? It begins when you finish worship and, and Sunday service here and go out that door. From that point, point on, let us remember to dedicate ourselves to the Lord. At work, at school, wherever we go. May we, be, may we really remember to dedicate. And that, I think that's the more difficult part. F to remember to dedicate our life and our time to God when we are at work. When we are with friends, with colleagues, and so on. But may that dedication take place. And that dedicate before, before we come to worship, when we, before we present ourselves to God, we need to be purified. How do we get purified? Let us uh, read one passage and we will finish. Psalm 119. Psalm 119 verse 9. How can a young man keep his, it's at the bottom on the right. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. It is the word of God that purifies us. So may we be purified before we come to the word. And I believe that through the word, we are purified today. And now, let us really live our life of dedication. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace, for allowing us to keep this Lord's Day holy. And we believe through the word that you have purified all of us. And so, Father, we pray that we, you, you may help us not to pick up all the past sins that we are forgiven of, but leave them behind and go forth in dedicating our life to you. And Father, we want to do that every single day, every single hour. Please help us, purify us, walk with us, and help us to lift up our life, every minute and second of our life to you in dedication. And we believe that you will bless every single second, hour, minute, and every part of our body and our life. And we believe that you will walk with them, go with them, help them, and bless them. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Let's give thanks to God.